Delirium is a form of acute brain dysfunction encountered in critically ill adults and it is associated with a significant morbidity and mortality. It is a complex and urgent medical condition marked by an acute change in mental status, presenting with confusion, inability to focus, disorganized thinking, and occasionally, changes in consciousness. It is a medical emergency that demands prompt evaluation and treatment. The confusion assessment method for the intensive care unit, CHEM-ICU, is utilized to identify delirium and includes evaluating for an acute or fluctuating change in mental status, assessing the patient's attention, examining the coherence of the patient's thought processes, and observing any deviation from a fully alert state of consciousness. These key features help clinicians swiftly diagnose and manage this serious condition. Delirium, though widespread, often remains undetected within healthcare settings, despite the fact that it can be prevented and carries a significant economic burden. The occurrence and recognition of delirium vary across different patient populations, but it consistently escapes notice due to inadequate routine screening and insufficient emphasis on it in medical training. The financial implications are substantial, with national costs in the United States exceeding $164 billion annually, overshadowing the $64 billion associated with sepsis, as reported by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in 2019. Importantly, with proper preventive measures, an estimated 30 to 40 percent of delirium cases could be prevented. Compared to dementia, Delirium onset is sudden and rapid, with fluctuating symptoms and usually last for days to months. It's marked by inattention and may include hallucinations and paranoia. In the long run, delirium may be reversible, as opposed to the permanent cognitive impairment characteristic of dementia. Characteristics of the patients that have been consistently found to increase the delirium risk include advanced age, pre-existing cognitive impairment, and history of hypertension. Some studies have found that cigarette smoking and alcohol use increase the risk of delirium incidence, although the current evidence is insufficient to determine if they are independently associated with ICU delirium. A high number of comorbidities and frailty also appear to increase the risk, although the evidence is still inconclusive. Patients with multiple comorbidities and frailty have a lower physical and cognitive physiological reserve, which impairs the capacity to sustain normal brain functioning in response to the stress of critical illness and may ultimately lead to delirium. These patients with predisposing factors and critical illness may develop delirium while in the ICU precipitated by multiple other factors, often combined, such as metabolic disturbances, prolonged mechanical ventilation, pain, immobility sedatives, and adverse environmental conditions that impair vision, hearing, or sleep. While certain risk factors are not modifiable, others, such as limited mobility and pain can be easily adjusted. These adjustable risk factors are central to the strategies aimed at preventing delirium in the ICU and will be discussed in detail later. There are other risks that are associated with the treatment provided in the ICU. Studies have shown that the use of benzodiazepines, especially lorazepam and midazolam, is independently associated with increased risk of delirium. In addition, these studies have demonstrated a dose-dependent relationship, whereby the risk is higher with higher benzodiazepine doses. Opiates, especially morphine, have also been linked with delirium risk, and there seems to be a correlation between administration of opiates with benzodiazepines and increased delirium duration. Furthermore, administration of epidural analgesia and sedation with propofol also show some association, although the evidence is still inconclusive. Anticholinergic agents can also precipitate delirium, and systemic corticosteroids have been shown to be significantly associated with transitioning to delirium from a non-delirious or non-comatose state. The connection between delirium and psychopharmacological agents is likely due to their effect on neurotransmitters that appear to be critical to the emergence of delirium, in particular gamma-aminobutyric acid, acetylcholine, dopamine, and serotonin. An imbalance in the synthesis, release, and inactivation of these neurotransmitters seems to be one of the mechanisms of delirium. Once delirium is developed, its symptomatology varies as well, particularly with respect to its psychomotor manifestations. 
Delirium is classified into hyperactive, hypoactive, and mixed subtypes. Hypoactive and mixed delirium are the most common presentations seen in the ICU, accounting for over 90% of cases. Patients with hypoactive delirium are predominantly lethargic with reduced motor activity, in contrast to patients with hyperactive delirium who are often agitated and restless. Patients with mixed delirium have symptoms of both hypoactive and hyperactive delirium that can change over the course of the disease. Delirium significantly impacts patient outcomes by prolonging both ICU stays and the duration of mechanical ventilation. It is associated with a mortality rate of around 33%, comparable to that of sepsis. Additionally, it often results in patients losing their independence. Moreover, it substantially heightens the risk of developing post-traumatic stress syndrome and the risk of dementia by more than 12 times, even after adjusting for variables such as age, gender, initial health severity, existing health conditions, and any pre-existing dementia. Finally, it is worth noted that the detection of delirium is a collaborative process that requires the combined efforts of the nursing staff and the clinician. Nurses are tasked with conducting routine delirium screenings every shift using the CAM ICU tool, as well as implementing standardized preventive measures. The clinician, on their part, reinforces these preventive actions and addresses any positive screens to validate the diagnosis of delirium. Thank you.